My name is Katherine Badgley and I'm a professor at the University of Michigan. I'm in the Museum of Paleontology, the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, and also the Residential College. Okay, Katherine, um, how did you get interested in vertebrate paleontology? I became interested in paleontology in general when I was an undergraduate and I took both biology and geology courses in my first year in college mm -hmm. and I was enthralled with my geology courses and less impressed with my biology courses. And so what eventually got me interested to going into paleontology as a field was the fact that studying paleontology would help me accomplish a kind of grand vision about how the history of life fit into the history of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that is actually the thing that I feel that has sustained me most over the years in the sense that it's not so much my individual discoveries that I feel are my proudest accomplishments, but more the fact that I feel as though I have been learning how to integrate mm -hmm. those, all those different perspectives and partly to gain a greater understanding of where humans fit in mm -hmm. and also just to realize how connected we are with the rest of nature. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, maybe next you could tell us a little bit about your current research and maybe something about a couple of contributions that you feel sure, you've made. Sure, sure. Um, uh, my, I've done a lot of field work in two major regions. One is in the Miocene sequences of Pakistan, mm -hmm. and my uh, one of my major contributions, I think, has been working on many different aspects of that sequence, mostly involved with paleoecology, so that now we feel that we have a very good perspective on how the environmental changes through the sequence relate to the evolutionary changes in the mammalian faunas. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of um, something that I'm helping to write up now. Mm -hmm. And I've had probably, I don't know, at least 20, maybe 30 publications about this sequence, and now I'm, I'm one of the editors on a book project that's trying to synthesize that all together. And you started that work? What? I started that work in 1975 as a graduate student. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of, I felt like I was on the bottom of the totem pole, mm -hmm. and now I'm one of the directors of that mm -hmm. project. Great. So it's been, you know, it's been a journey there, mm -hmm. and one that has been very fulfilling. The other major theme that I'm very excited about now is uh, and relates to this unification of earth sciences and, mm -hmm. and, and life, the history of life, is that I'm very interested in how mountain building affects mammal diversity across mm -hmm. large regions. And I'm working in Western North America with the fossil record, with people who study the history of mountain building, so they're structural geologists and geochemists. And we are trying to develop a series of uh, hypotheses, uh, hypotheses to test with mm -hmm. the fossil record about whether mammals are diversifying in, at particular times that happen to be times where there's a lot of tectonic activity and also a lot of climate mm -hmm. change. So I'm, I'm working in the Mojave Desert, I'm working in other parts of the Basin and Range, mm -hmm. and in addition to having you know, wonderful students and colleagues who are paleontologists, I'm also working with these geologists and also people who work on the living fauna mm -hmm. to try to synthesize all these different perspectives into mm -hmm. one large research program. Right. Well, in the course of your career, I, well, you now mentor students, but you had mentors yourself, right. and maybe you could identify yes. um, or share with us some of the yes. well, some of those names. When I was a, when I, particularly in my doctoral program, I was working on something that neither of my graduate advisors knew a lot about. Mm -hmm. However, both of them, this is John Kirsch, a mammalogist, mm -hmm. David Pilbeam, a paleoanthropologist, were people who also had a great appreciation of sort of the unification of many fields of liberal arts and sciences. Mm -hmm. And and that and then they were they were always encouraging. And I I was very grateful for that support. Mm -hmm. And as an undergraduate, my advisor was Steve Gould, and it was actually his uh, his amazing lectures in my very first wow. science course that made me realize that it's not just about geology; it's all about it's a whole history of ideas. Mm -hmm. And I was very I was very impressed with that. And he at that time in his life, he was not as busy as he became mm -hmm. when he became much more well known and much more of a public speaker. So I actually had quite a bit of time that I could walk into his yeah, office and talk to him about anything I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so I really feel that Steve Gould has also been one of my mentors as well. Mm -hmm. And then also Kay Berensmeyer, although she was not formally on the faculty at Yale when I was a graduate student, she was, uh, she was part of our research team in working in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. 
I had done field with her, work with her earlier in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And here was a very, you know, bright, interesting, successful paleontologist who was also striking out in new directions with mm -hmm. her work on taphonomy right. and paleoecology. And that, in a sense, showed me that there is nothing to fear about being a woman in this field. So mm -hmm. all of those people, I think, made a big difference. Right, or even going into a new direction. That's right, yeah. that's right. And I've tried to encourage my students that way too. I want them to, you know, I'm happy if they are part of my research program, also happy if they take mm -hmm. off and want to go in another direction. And mainly, I just want them to realize that whatever they want to do, I want to be there for them. Right, that's great, very supportive. <laughs> Um, I guess the next question kind of leads into that. What sort of advice would you give a student that said they wanted to go into, into VP? For students who are going into VP, you know, if, particularly if I talk to them as, say, undergraduates or even high school students who haven't quite figured out what they want to do, mm -hmm. I think my advice would be to explore all the different aspects of mm -hmm. paleontology, not just academic research, but also teaching, public outreach, illustration, museum work because all of those different aspects of paleontology are necessary in order to keep the field moving forward. And frankly, as we all know, there's, all, there's, been, uh, there's always a, a dearth of jobs, mm -hmm. particularly academic jobs, compared to the number of highly right. qualified people. Mm -hmm. And yet there are other ways, many other ways of being highly engaged in the field that are also very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to understand fairly, at least before they go to graduate school, whether a research career is right. for them, or whether one of these other more supporting roles would but be. But you don't know that until you actually explore. Right, so avenues. I think yeah. what I would recommend is that people explore, even pre preparation. I know mm -hmm. a lot of, actually mm -hmm. I know a lot of students who start out just working in the prep lab because they think mm -hmm. it's interesting. And then they get, they, they find that the whole, they realize that the whole field is interesting and some of them have gone on to be, you know, very successful researchers. Mm -hmm. And others are just very happy as preparators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's worth trying a few things yes. first. And the other thing I would recommend, too, because it's been a huge part of my life, is um, my, my academic life, is field work. Mm -hmm. Field work is constantly inspiring, mm -hmm. I think. And partly it's not just where fossils come from, but it's also a chance to step out of, usual, mm -hmm. usually, out of a very busy, often urban, mm -hmm. often kind of high-stress life into a life that's really out in nature. And mm -hmm. you feel more as if you're having conversations with the past mm -hmm. and the present. And it's a time to, that you can be a little more reflective mm -hmm. and, and integrate a little more. And even let some questions that are kind of quietly gestating, you know, kind of come to the fore. And I feel as though the, those field seasons have always been in, incredibly inspirational and restorative. Mm -hmm. Now, with regard to, to um, field work, did you have any challenges um, as a young woman in the field? I mean, did you... Uh, good I, As far as challenges doing field work, I would say I was fairly lucky in the mm -hmm. sense that the places that I was working, even in Pakistan, which is a fairly conservative society in terms of Pakistanis, mm -hmm. um, I was with a group of people that was largely international, and we were not really, uh, how should I say, we were not really judged on the terms of Pakistani society. So mm -hmm. I was usually treated with respect, with um, with, with great, uh, you know, people were very kind mm -hmm. and supportive. And there were a couple of people who were downright annoying, but they were not all Pakistanis. Some of them were, <laughs> you know, some of them were Europeans. So, mm -hmm. so in general, I would say that that worked out well, mm -hmm. partly because I, I think it might have been a little more challenging had I been going there on my own. But because I was part of a large right. team, the whole team was being well supported mm -hmm. by our collaborators there. And in the United States, I would say I haven't had serious problems there, but just in general, I would I always caution students not to go out in the field alone. Mm -hmm. But that's really not so much a gender issue as it is just a general yeah, safety, a safety, a safety yeah. matter. So I've, in that regard, I feel as though I have been, mm -hmm. I've been fortunate there. I did have, um, I would say, some stumbling blocks in my career because it took, a, it was a long time mm -hmm. before I got the academic position that I really wanted. After I got my, uh, after I finished my postdoc, I was a research scientist for what, 25 years, mm -hmm. and it was only after 25 years that I got a, a tenure track position. And during the time that I was a research scientist, which is a soft money position, mm -hmm. you know, with very scant funding, mm -hmm. I, I think I had to kind of face up to how was I going to sustain my interest. I, and I really tried to focus on what, in, what I enjoyed most and mm -hmm. the kind of feedback that I got from my colleagues. 
And that was, that made a huge difference. And I would say that the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology made a huge difference because mm -hmm. every time I came to the meetings, I felt appreciated. Mm -hmm. I felt that uh, people were interested in what I was doing. And that really got me through times when I was, you know, maybe a little bit, I was having doubts about whether I'd made the right choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful to all co my colleagues. And I realize too, now that after what happened to me that I need to be sure to pass on that kind of support to other right. people who are in similar positions. Right. And now I just kind of want to do an off the cuff question yeah. about, uh, you've been coming to SVP meetings since, I don't know when you're- 1976 probably. Okay. Yes. So if you look, if you make a comparison between then and now, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that, that kind of come out for you? Well, maybe two things immediately, and then uh, one is how much the society has grown, mm -hmm. and I think that's it's probably it's grown out of proportion to the growth in you know population size in right. general. So I th I'm very pleased to see there's just been a huge mm -hmm. flourishing of interest in vertebrate paleontology, and its relevance to many different fields mm -hmm. from conservation to um, to just public outreach and science you know science for the people in general. Uh, and to, of course, to academic research. And of course, the other major thing that's so impressive is how much women have increased as students, as faculty, as, as, in, as illustrators, as preparators, mm -hmm. in really every facet. Right. And also how, how they are much more involved in leaders in the organization. Mm -hmm. And that's been an amazing transformation. So if you took, compare a picture, mm -hmm. 1975, where women are a very right. clear minority, I don't know if if it's any if I, I would be hard pressed to say whether it's off of 50/50 at this point. And there are times well, when sometimes I think that that the um, you know sometimes it seems to me that if anything it's even more women than men. But especially in the well, the, stu the student membership is now 50% yeah. women. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's been terrific. Oh, okay. Um, how about anything else that we haven't really discussed that you want to share about your vertebrate paleontology experiences? I would just say that it's been a very, my whole career in vertebrate paleontology has been very fulfilling for me. And, I, and it's really still the same reasons that I got into it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Partly it's the grand vision mm -hmm. of how humans relate to the rest of life. And I, I think one of the most interesting things that I think about more than I used to is now how insights from the fossil record contribute to our understanding of environmental crises today and how we can use some of the, the insights mm -hmm. from the past to for conservation mm -hmm. for you know changes in society that we should make in order not to make a big mess of the rest of nature and even you know preserve our own well-being so i'm very grateful to have that deep time perspective mm -hmm. and i think that that's a um, that's just that's a wonderful thing a wonderful big idea mm -hmm. to try to pass on well it fits right with bi your interest in biodiversity as absolutely well. biodiversity biogeography yes mm -hmm. this sense that we're all part of a grand, you know, mm -hmm. a grand journey. Right. Okay, well thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you.